Hello, my name is Melissa from Woods and Wool, and today I'm going to talk to you about Tunisian crochet. Now, I just learned how to Tunisian crochet last fall. It's something I've meant to do for a long time, but I finally sat down to learn last fall, and there was a lot of things that really surprised me about it. Now, I'd seen a lot of friends and different makers try out Tunisian crochet, release patterns, so I was pretty familiar with a lot of the concepts, but when I sat down to learn, I found myself thinking, wait a second, nobody told me about this. Or there was just a lot of things that surprised me that I wouldn't have known until I picked it up and started learning myself. So as soon as I started to learn and notice these things, I made a list. Because I find once you're out of those really beginner stages, it's very easy to forget all the things that you didn't know before. So they just become that common knowledge that you assume everybody knows but when you are fresh into learning something you really get a whole new perspective about what it is that you're learning so let me tell you a lot of the things that i learned and how i learned and hopefully that helps you along your tunisian crochet journey as well so whether you've never tried it or if you're experienced I would love to hear from you and your thoughts on this video because I'm sure there's things I missed or if there's other things you'd like to add to it, you'll have to let me know in the comments. Now, speaking of other things to add to it, I also asked you all on Instagram, what surprised you about Tunisian crochet? And I got a lot of great responses that I'll be sharing for you as well. So let's dive in. My very first Tunisian crochet project was this coaster. I just got some scrap yarn that I already had and I decided to make a quick little coaster. I thought that would be the perfect project to learn some stitches and it was. Now, a lot of people asked me as soon as I started sharing on Instagram about Tunisian crochet, they said, wait a second, where are you learning from? And I said, hang on, hang on. You have to have the Tunisian Crochet Handbook written by the queen herself, Tony Lipsy of TL Yarn Crafts. This book is fantastic and Tony is a wonderful teacher. So her book not only has some beautiful, beautiful Tunisian Crochet patterns in it, it also has roughly like 70 pages of instructions and things about Tunisian Crochet from the basics you need to know. It talks about how to change colors, increasing, decreasing, really gives you that foundational knowledge about Tunisian Crochet that helps you understand a project, whether you're following a pattern or just starting to learn and test out different stitches yourself. So highly recommend this book. And I also just use YouTube. There's so many fantastic videos out there that people have done about teaching Tunisian crochet, whether you want a quick video or something a little longer to walk you through each step, there's tons of resources out there. So I encourage you to check those out. So those are the two things I used when I started my very first little coaster here. I highly recommend starting with a coaster or something very small because it just gets you familiar with the stitches and the techniques. But I did make a big mistake on this project. So let me tell you about it so that you don't make the same one. My first mistake was buying this hook. Now I thought when I learned Tunisian crochet, I would need a Tunisian crochet hook, but that is not the case. You can actually use a regular crochet hook when you're doing a small project like a coaster or something. As long as all your stitches fit on that hook and aren't falling off, you'll be just fine. So I regret buying this hook for a number of reasons. One, it's not interchangeable. The cord does not, actually, no, wait, this cord does swivel. Okay, that's a pro for this hook. And it is a chow goo hook, so it is a very nice hook. I'm just telling you, for me, I didn't need to buy this and I will probably never use it again. So. I really, really don't like this cord. It's very springy and rigid. As you can see when I'm working with it, it's just, I just feel like it's all over the place and bouncing and getting in my way. So I was really fighting with this hook. And it was also quite silly because again, I was only making this little coaster. So I kind of just had the cord hanging off over here, getting in the way, and it was really just unnecessary. And I could have saved myself some money by using a regular crochet hook. So normally when I'm crocheting, I use my furls hooks for 95% of my projects. And specifically, I love their streamlined hooks like this one. They're ergonomic hooks that I find very comfortable, but they do not work for Tunisian crochet. 
So with Tunisian, you're going to be working with a lot of open loops that are going to be sliding down your hook. And with this hook, it's just too big here. So this hook will not work for Tunisian crochet. Similarly, if you're familiar with hooks like this one that have a more rubbery ergonomic handle, also not ideal for Tunisian crochet because your loops can't slide down that hook that you need them to. But if you have a boy hook, a Susan Bates hook, or something like this chow Gu hook, just something that is straight and smooth, this will work perfectly for your first Tunisian crochet hook project or your first Tunisian crochet project. So go ahead, look in your hooks, see in your stash what you have. If you've got a little bit of yarn left over from something and you have a regular straight hook, again, a boy or Susan Bates hook that are very common and expensive and easy to find are really the perfect starter hook for your first project. And then once you dive in, you will quickly find out whether you are maybe not loving Tunisian crochet or whether you want to just keep going, which is how I felt when I was learning. I was like, oh my goodness, this is the start of something great. I have to do more of this. So now I want to talk a little bit about the other hooks I ended up getting, which I got after a couple of projects, but let me tell you about those. Once I realized how much I love Tunisian crochet, I knew I would need an interchangeable Tunisian crochet hook set. I knew that a hook set would offer me a lot more flexibility and a lot more just creativity in what I could make with Tunisian crochet. So I wanted an interchangeable hook set, but what I didn't realize was that it was going to be a little bit of a headache to be able to choose the right one. I didn't realize how many options and little details would matter to me when looking at hook sets from what the hooks were made out of to the cords, the sizes offered, and of course the price point because Tunisian crochet hook sets are a little expensive. They're an investment, if you will. Someone once told me, buy it nice or buy it twice. And that always stuck with me because I didn't wanna buy four or five different sets of hooks. I really wanted one that I would love and that I would be happy with for a long time. So I ended up making a spreadsheet, debated over a lot of different options for many days, and then I bought the Lantern Moon Tunisian hook set. So this hook probably looks pretty similar to the untrained eye of the other hook that I just showed you, but these hooks are interchangeable, which means that in the hook set, there are multiple different sizes, there's another cord, and I can interchange these hooks and cords to use for many different projects, whether it's something wide like a blanket, something small, and of course, with different yarn weights, I have the hook sizes that I'll need. I am so happy I bought this hook set, but again, I was just really surprised at the options that were out there and that there didn't seem to be a perfect set. I found that it really was a personal choice and that's why I'm saying I loved this Lantern Moon set. I am so happy I got it. But if you're debating on sets, really, really take a look and find out what matters to you. So some of the features that mattered to me, of course, I wanted it to be an interchangeable set instead of this hook where the cord is fixed onto the hook. I wanted a set that I could remove the cords and hooks and interchange them. But I also wanted a cord that had the, it's metal inside and then it's coated in nylon. So if you've ever seen these cable styles or cord styles, they're very smooth and flexible. So again, if you look at these next to each other, this cord is just relaxed. It's just hanging out. And this one wants to just kind of bob all over the place when you're moving it. And I found this to be very frustrating working with it. And this one is much less noticeable and just kind of relaxes with my project. I also really, really wanted a cord that would swivel independently from the hook. So I have a video with an unboxing of these hooks if you wanna see more about them, but I just wanna breeze over a few of these really great details. But these hooks swivel. So as you're working your stitches, Again, it's just one of those things that gives you a little bit more of a smooth experience where your tools aren't frustrating you, they're working with you and making your project even better. So that was something that really surprised me is how much thought I'd have to purchasing into purchasing the right hook set for me. And I'm really glad I landed on this one, but wow, it was a doozy of a decision. And 
I'm really glad that I now have this set because now I have what I need to make future Tunisian crochet projects. This next thing I had a little bit of preparation for because I'd seen other people talk about it, but it still kind of surprised me as I started working on my projects. And that is that Tunisian crochet curls. So if you've never seen it before, this is my very first project I ever made. And you can see that it's curling and that is a natural part of the Tunisian crochet fabric. It's perfectly normal. Um, if it's extremely curly, you might wanna bump up your hook size, but you'll notice a little bit of curl with any Tunisian crochet project that you do. So what you can do is you can add a border and you can also steam block your project. This one does not have a border and I did not block it. So you can really see this is Tunisian crochet in its natural curly state. It's not too bad and I just use this as a coaster so I never bothered to add a border or steam it. But I have this project, which is my speckle blanket. I'll talk a little bit more about later. This is my first Tunisian crochet pattern. I love it so much. It's made with a superwash merino yarn, which means that wool loves to be blocked. It really shines once it's blocked. And you can see that this project doesn't have any curling because I added a beautiful little border here around the edge. And then I also did a light steam blocking with this project, which really just helped it relax and eliminated a lot of that curling that you might see with Tunisian crochet. So if that is something that has scared you about Tunisian crochet, just think about the fiber you're using, maybe increase your hook size, and definitely a border helped it a lot as well. But as you can see, there really isn't any significant curling on this project. Maybe we see a little bit of it there at the end, but no big deal whatsoever. Whereas if you had, let's say, a very small hook for the yarn that you were working with, your project would ultimately be a little burrito and it would just grow right up all the time. And I can tell you that because I made that mistake as well. So think about your hook size, test your gauge if you're following a pattern and really think about the fibers you're working with and maybe blocking at the end if you are trying to conquer the Tunisian crochet curl. Something that never occurred to me before I started doing Tunisian crochet was what the backside of my project would look like. I guess I just assumed it would be reversible. I really didn't know. But once I started working Tunisian crochet, just doing the simple stitch, you can see this is what the front side of my work looks like. It's that really recognizable, beautiful Tunisian crochet fabric. Oh, it is so gorgeous. And the back side is kind of like a bumpy little textured side. I just didn't know what it would look like, but it's a really, really pretty kind of bumpy texture on the back. So nothing crazy, but I just never realized that the front and the back wouldn't be reversible, something that didn't occur to me. So if you're planning a project, that might be something that you want to consider. For my next project, I had to do a dishcloth. I just love making dishcloths. I find they're such a wonderful starter project when you're learning a new stitch or new to crochet or Tunisian crochet. Love making dishcloths. And I was really, really happy to make these. Now this one I haven't used yet, so it does have a little bit of that curl to it, but that all goes away as soon as I get it wet and start to use it in our kitchen. And then I also made some Tunisian crochet headbands. I used the honeycomb stitch for these, which what a gorgeous texture. I just, wow. Tunisian crochet really blew me away with the honeycomb stitch. It might be my favorite texture I've ever seen of Tunisian crochet, but I have a lot to learn, so I'm sure there's still a lot out there I haven't seen yet. But I was really, really pleasantly surprised at once my hands got going, once things started to feel a little bit more smooth and a little bit more mindless, I was really pleasantly surprised at how meditative and enjoyable working these projects up was. I did find it felt a little slower to me than regular crochet, but I didn't take any official time you know, calculations or anything. I didn't calculate, you know, how fast I worked up a dishcloth in Tunisian versus regular crochet. Every stitch and every person is gonna be a little different. So to me, I wasn't too concerned, but I will say it did feel a little slower, but it could also ju just be because I was learning. So I'm not gonna give you my official statement on that, but it just felt 
a little bit slower. But I did really enjoy it and I love the dense fabric that Tunisian crochet makes. It's just beautiful and especially with a blanket like the speckle blanket, you get a fabric that is just different than knit or crochet. It feels thick and squishy, but also very smooth at the same time. And I really, really, really love working it up. Even though it feels a little slower, I find that with Tunisian, you're normally going to be going up a hook size. So if I would normally use a five millimeter hook with regular crochet and a worsted weight yarn, I'll probably use a six millimeter hook with Tunisian crochet. And that is just the nature of how the stitches work up, how the fabric is created, and of course, avoiding that curl. So I think it kind of evens out as far as your speed goes, but you still end up with a beautiful dense fabric, even though you're increasing a hook size. It's it's just stunning. So I think that is something to consider. Just all the things that you know about crochet might feel a little bit different with Tunisian. And I mentioned earlier about how I normally use a furls ergonomic streamline hook for my crocheting. It was the same thing when learning to use the Tunisian crochet hook. My hand had to kind of figure out where to hold the hook and how to manage those different loops. And then once I got going, it became a lot smoother and felt a lot more natural to me as I was working on my project. But there was definitely a learning curve where my muscles kind of were a little bit tense and I had to relax a little bit as I got more comfortable holding my project and working it up. This leads me right into the comments that you all shared with me over on Instagram when I asked what surprised you about learning Tunisian crochet. One of the comments I saw a lot of was that you felt a lot of hand fatigue or soreness even as you learn Tunisian crochet because it uses those different muscles of your hands and you're learning how to hold a hook slightly differently as well as managing the loops on your hook. So that is something to keep in mind to be patient with yourself, give yourself breaks, and of course stretch your hands if you need to because Tunisian crochet can work your hand muscles a little bit differently and you don't wanna have sore hands. So for me, I found that projects like the dishcloth I mentioned earlier, normally if I'm using a cotton yarn with regular crochet, it does not bother me whatsoever, but I do find with Tunisian, it slows me down a little bit and my hands don't necessarily get sore, but I find they get a little bit more tired quickly. So I just like to stretch my hands a little bit, maybe work a snack in, a little snack break in my project, and keep that in mind if I'm working with a cotton yarn. But I did find with a wool yarn, I didn't really experience that issue as much, as well as once I got going, my hands felt more comfortable and more relaxed doing Tunisian crochet. So I think it gets a little bit better over time, but take breaks as you need to. A lot of you also mentioned how you might have a different tension when working Tunisian crochet. So your tension may be tighter or even looser than it would be with regular crochet. And along the same note, I had a lot of comments about how Tunisian crochet used more yarn for you than it did with regular crochet as well as how the fabric is denser with, with Tunisian than regular crochet. But all of this is just, there's so many variables. For example, it could depend on what stitch you use in Tunisian versus regular crochet. If you're comparing the, the Tunisian simple stitch versus single crochet, that seems like a very similar comparison there. But at the same time, there's also crochet stitches that are known to use up a lot of yarn. We think about puff stitches or bobbles or the waffle stitch. A lot of those use up a lot of yarn as well. So don't write Tunisian crochet off because you're afraid it's going to use up more yarn. I think it is totally worth it and you get a beautiful, dense, gorgeous fabric at the end of your project. I was right there with so many of you mentioning curling. I wasn't sure what to expect. I wasn't sure what the curling would look like, but I definitely was a little surprised when I found my projects to be a little curly. Now I found that again, like with my speckle blanket, a little border and a steaming block went such a long way and really eliminated any curling issues. So it really wasn't anything to fret about for me personally. And a lot of you also mentioned how Tunisian crochet introduced you to so many new textures and stitches that you can do that 
regular crochet just doesn't give you the same look for. So I think the perfect example of that is the honeycomb stitch. Again, I think this is one of the most gorgeous stitches I've ever seen. It is just so beautiful and it's really easy. So if you're looking to learn some new textures and stitches, Tunisian crochet might just be the way to go for you because there's a whole world of textures out there that I haven't even tapped into them all, but something like the honeycomb stitch is really simple to learn and gives you a whole new texture to work up your projects in. Another benefit I heard a lot about with Tunisian crochet is that it helped a lot of people learn how to knit. So if you're a crocheter and knitting is just something that's really hard for you to wrap your mind around, Tunisian crochet could be the secret to learning because Tunisian, when you think about it, it's kind of like a beautiful hybrid with knit and crochet. You're using a hook, so that feels very familiar, but at the same time, you're using a cord, you're managing working multiple stitches kind of at the same time because you have all those stitches open on your hook with all the loops that you're working. So I think it really could be that beautiful hybrid between knit and crochet. And even if you're a knitter, it could also help you learn how to crochet. So something to keep in mind if you've wanted to learn both knit and crochet, or if you already knew, know both, um, Tunisian is really kind of the best of both worlds and a lot of fun if you're into basically anything with yarn. The last thing overall, one of the biggest things of feedback I got was so many of you loved Tunisian crochet. I was so surprised too at how quickly and instantly I fell in love with it. Once I did that return pass for the first or second time, I was like, oh my goodness, this is euphoric. It was just wonderful and relaxing and meditative. And so many of you describe Tunisian crochet as easy and satisfying and relaxing. And it made me really happy to hear that so many of you love it as much as I did. And I'm saying this even when I was just making my first little coaster. I mean, this didn't take me years to learn. It didn't take me a long time to really get the benefits of Tunisian crochet and find out what a joy it is to do. I will give the caveat that as much as I've talked about how easy and wonderful Tunisian crochet is, I think a lot of that is because I've crocheted for so long. So to give you a little example, I had a friend over and I had just learned how to do Tunisian crochet. So I gave her my yarn and my hook and I said, oh my gosh, you have to try this. It's so wonderful. And I was like, here you go. And I just showed her how to do it really quickly. And right away, she was so overwhelmed and I feel so bad, but she was like, oh my gosh, I don't understand what I'm doing. I don't even know how to hold the yarn. So keep in mind, if you don't know how to knit or crochet yet at all, you may just want to start with one of those first, because I think really the reason Tunisian crochet is so easy is because you already know how to hold a hook or hold needles and how to hold your yarn. So Something to keep in mind as I'm saying how easy this is and how fun it is, or if you hear other people talk about that, keep in mind it's because you're talking to somebody who's crocheted for a very long time. So if you're very new to crochet or knitting and trying to learn Tunisian crochet and wondering why maybe it's not as easy for you, it could just be a matter of your hands figuring out how to hold all the things and how to just get that muscle memory together to work your stitches. So be patient with yourself. It's really wonderful what, once you get going, but it does take a little bit of familiarity in holding your yarn and holding a hook or needles in your hand. Now I will say with the friend that I tried to teach, that was kind of a disaster and I felt really bad about it, but we laughed about it. And a couple of weeks later, I actually taught her how to do regular crochet and she fell in love with it right away. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you're trying to learn or teach knit or crochet, sometimes you just have to walk away and try something different or try the other craft. And usually something clicks for someone, whether it's one or the other, but usually something will click for you first and you'll know which one is for you. Now I've designed a lot of crochet patterns and something with Tunisian crochet that I had in mind as I was learning was I just wanted to learn for the sake of learning. I just thought it would be fun. But of course, the designer in me started to get those wheels turning and started to think of a design that I wanted to do. And what I realized that I needed as a new Tunisian crocheter was I needed to learn the language of Tunisian crochet. So learning the skills and the mechanics and how to do the stitches is one thing, but Tunisian crochet has its own kind of 
language if you're reading, or in my case, writing a pattern. So with Tunisian crochet, you're gonna use different acronyms and the way that you might write or read a pattern is a little bit different, of course, because there's a forward pass, a return pass, a bind off, and just some different techniques in the pattern that you may not see in a regular crochet pattern. So this was something, again, the designer in me really wanted to learn and wanted to make easy for other people because with crochet, Tunisian crochet or knitting, I firmly believe as soon as you understand the mechanics of what you're doing and how to work the stitches and how your hands work with your needles or your hook, the next step is to learn how to read a pattern. And once you learn how to read a pattern, then you can make anything in the whole world because all you have to do is follow it stitch by stitch and row by row and you can make anything from coasters to sweaters to blankets anything in between so i really really wanted to simplify that and come up with the perfect beginner friendly tunisian crochet pattern so if you've learned those techniques of how to work the tunisian simple stitch but now you don't really know what to make maybe you've made some coasters or dishcloth that is why i designed the speckle blanket so this blanket uses DK weight yarn, so you get that satisfaction of working with a nice weight yarn that's gonna work up quickly, and then with the DK weight plus the Tunisian kind of thickness and dense fabric, it's really just the perfect blend. And I love, 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 I'm so obsessed with how Tunisian crochet works in a speckled or variegated colored yarn. So this is a hand-dyed yarn. I used DK weight, as I mentioned, this is a super wash merino, and I put together this pattern really with the intent of making something that once you've learned the mechanics of Tunisian crochet, now you need to learn how to read a pattern. And this pattern is perfect. It will introduce you to those basic languages and acronyms of Tunisian crochet, and you'll be able to follow along and figure out how to read a Tunisian crochet pattern. So the speckle blanket comes in many different sizes from a small security blanket size to a king size blanket. I would recommend starting with a smaller size, like throw size blanket or smaller so that you don't have to have too many loops on your cable. As I mentioned, when you have a hook with a cable, you're gonna have all your loops kind of falling down here as you're picking them up. So the speckle blanket was really born out of something to get started with your Tunisian crochet journey. You've learned the Tunisian simple stitch, but now you don't know what to make. Well, dive into your stash, find some DK weight or even worsted weight yarn and take a try at the speckle blanket because let me tell you, this thing was so much fun to work up and it has really become a family favorite. We use this one as a stroller blanket. And like I said, that dense Tunisian fabric is just, oh, it's just a dream. I love it so much. So this probably won't be the last time that you hear me talk about Tunisian crochet, but for now, I will leave you with the speckle blanket, which is my very first Tunisian crochet pattern. And I am just so excited to have learned this. It took me so long and I am so thankful for everyone that cheered me along, gave me advice, and I hope that this helps you if you haven't learned Tunisian crochet yet. Now, if you have learned, Tell me everything I missed in the comments. What are the things that surprised you? What stitches should I learn next? Tell me everything that you wish you knew as a beginner to Tunisian crochet because I, again, I can't see myself stopping anytime soon. This is so much fun and with projects that are meditative and fun like this one, I just have to make something else. So until next time, I will see you over on Instagram at Woods and Wool, and I'll include links to everything I mentioned in the description box. So go ahead, find me over on Instagram at Woods and Wool. You can subscribe to my email list and here on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. If you liked this video and wanna see more of them, buy me a coffee that really helps support me in making content like this. And I hope to see you again here very soon, but until then, I'll see you over on Instagram. Bye.